Thank you for joining us today. My name is James Mason, and I'm the Senior Vice President of Space Systems at Planet. Our mission is to use space to help life on Earth, and we're doing this with a data and analytics platform powered by the largest Earth observation system the world has ever seen. My team's job is to build and operate the satellites that make up this system. And today, I'll reflect a bit on what first brought me to Planet, and then we'll look at what we've built so far and where I think this industry is going in the future. My first memory of flying was in a hot air balloon, and ever since then, I've been fascinated by it, especially the different perspective it offers. From looking down from an airplane window to watching videos of spacewalking astronauts, there's just something so deeply special about seeing our planet from above. It separates you from the distractions of the here and now, and it instead allows you to see a bigger picture. It provides a greater understanding of the world around you and even your place in it. Astronauts have called this the overview effect, and they describe this powerful sense of unity, responsibility, and global connection that comes from seeing our world, not as a collection of countries or cultures, but rather as a single fragile planet. For those of us that are stuck here on the ground, satellites provide the ultimate perspective. They allow us to see the world as it really is, a complex system of interdependent systems. What might at first appear chaotic or confusing at ground level often reveals patterns and meaning when seen from above. And this is really the great promise of Earth observation from space, to see what this kind of higher perspective might do for the world. So it was back in 2011, and I was happily working at NASA when the opportunity came to join Planet. I realized right away that this was a way for me to help bring this overview effect to everyone. So I jumped at the chance to do it. And this has been my main personal motivation for spending the past decade of my career helping to build this team and this company. Back then, Planet had set out to image the world every single day and make all of that information accessible and actionable to everyone who needed it. This was a wildly ambitious goal at the time, but our start was modest. Behind me, you can see some of the first images from our early satellites. Even back in those early days, we knew that a data set like this would have a huge impact on the whole world. And we also knew that we would need hundreds of satellites to accomplish our mission, and this had never been done before. We would have to move quickly to learn and iterate and perfect our product, and we would need to rely heavily on automation and resourcefulness to do it. This would need a totally new approach to space missions. Instead of slowly building these huge, complex, expansive space observatories, we focused on miniaturizing and automating, creating large fleets of small satellites that provide greater resiliency through their strength in numbers and greater adaptability through being cheaper and faster to produce and therefore to upgrade. A part of this approach was a new way of developing satellites that focused on rapidly improving capabilities rather than trying to design a perfect satellite from requirements on the first attempt. And this approach was modeled on modern software development, and it emphasized prototyping and testing to mature systems that would get to space faster and that could be upgraded once they were there. We call this Agile Aerospace, and we've been refining and improving it through more than 18 satellite design revisions and after 450 satellites that we've launched. One specific product of this approach is the radios that we use to download our pictures. They have steadily increased in speed over time, and today they are 150,000 times faster than they were on our first satellite just eight years ago. It is literally faster for us to download an image from space than to download it over a gigabit internet connection at home. The same time span, we've also increased the number of imaging pixels each satellite is collecting by more than 10x, while making the data more precise and the satellites more reliable. We've applied this mentality to operations too, by lowering the orbits of our satellites and making software updates to improve their resolution over time. And this is the type of relentless behind the scenes engineering that means we deliver more relevant data of higher quality faster and faster every single year. Now with such a rapid design cycle, we need a very agile manufacturing process too. So we created a system that we call just-in-time manufacturing that has enabled us to build and test dozens of satellites per week. 
We're vertically integrated with our own factory and testing facilities, and we don't sell our satellites to anyone else. By keeping these capabilities in-house and only having ourselves as a satellite customer, we reduce all of the bureaucratic overhead that would otherwise slow us down. And this gives us so much more agility and flexibility. And this can really pay dividends when problems arise. To illustrate this point, let's talk for a second about launch failures. So Planet buys launch services from other companies, but we know that rockets historically fail about 5% of the time. That's just part of the space industry. We've had 30 successful launches to date, but we've also had three that did not make it to space. The most dramatic of these failures has to be when 26 of our satellites exploded shortly after liftoff in 2014. Watching all of our hard work literally go up in smoke was obviously a painful experience and potentially a really big setback for a small startup like us. But the next day, we knew we had to roll up our sleeves and get back to work. Within two weeks, we had built and tested new satellites, and these were launched to space and collecting imagery less than two months later. It's the same story for the other two failures. In both cases, we had launched more satellites within just four months, and our service was unaffected. In other words, we've engineered our business to be resilient to this type of risk. Our large satellite fleet, our rapid manufacturing, and our frequent launches means we can shake off setbacks like this, and this allows us to continue to serve our customers reliably, even when things go wrong. In contrast to the classic image of a big operation center with engineers manning consoles around the clock, our philosophy is that the system should run completely hands off, and people should only touch it to make improvements or to debug the occasional issue. Therefore, we've built an automated mission control system a global network of 48 ground stations in 11 different countries, and a planetary scale data processing pipeline to handle the sheer extent of our operations. These systems are running autonomously, day and night, to manage our fleet and process the more than 25 terabytes of imagery that we're downloading every single day. Everyone wants to build and launch satellites these days. It's flashy and exciting. But true operational reliability and scale comes from this type of behind-the-scenes infrastructure. It comes from a culture of continuous improvement and relentlessly optimizing for efficiency. It comes, ultimately, from making the complex seem routine. This is what we've been building for the past 10 years and what forms the foundation of what's coming next. So let's talk now about the future of planets and the industry as a whole. I believe that in the next five to 10 years, we'll see geospatial data and platforms like Planet driving a fundamental change in how governments and businesses operate. This is part of a broader digital transformation, but three specific factors will dominate in the Earth observation space. The first one is the increasing fusion of data sets from different sensors. This means taking different images from different types of cameras and combining these to build up a better understanding of what's happening than any one set of images could offer. The resulting product here is greater than the sum of the parts. The second trend is the shift away from delivering data, like pictures, towards simply delivering real-time, on-demand insights. If I were a user, I wouldn't really care about the satellites. I might not even care about the data. I would care about getting the answer to my question and getting it right now. This is going to be enabled by the combination of communications networks that can move data around the globe in near real time and advanced analytics that quickly turn that data into answers. The third trend is towards all of this becoming more broadly available and easily accessible. Imaging satellites are no longer only for governments. Interpreting the data no longer requires huge teams of geospatial scientists. Platforms like Planets will allow the data to be streamed and joined and analyzed. Systematically, the obstacles to using the data are being removed, and this will allow for much wider adoption and deeper integration. We at Planet see these trends very clearly, and this is why we are expanding our satellite fleet with both new sensors and capabilities that will work together in concert to create quick and accurate answers that we can deliver. We call this our virtual constellation because we think of it as a set of inputs to the data fusion and real-time insights platform, and it will improve over time as new data sets are added in on the back end. 
using our operational infrastructure and the automation we've built will provide the right information in the right place at the right time. So let me walk you through this concept in a little bit more detail. Today, our PlanetScope monitoring service makes a daily scan nearly everywhere in the world from over 150 Dove series satellites. Earlier this year in 2021, we upgraded the service from just four spectral bands to eight, and this enables more applications, especially in agriculture, forestry, and in earth science. At the same time, our 21 high-resolution skysats provide the ability to quickly zoom into areas of interest anywhere in the world multiple times per day, sometimes up to 10 or 12 times. And I think about this combined system like the human eye. The PlanetScope provides a peripheral vision. It's a wide field of view that is great for spotting movement or change, even when you're not looking at it. Meanwhile, the skysats provide a sharper image, just like when your eye focuses in on something of interest. The SkySats still have several years of operational life in them, but we've already begun work on the next generation of very high-resolution satellite system that we call Pelican that will continue the SkySat legacy. They're designed to provide higher resolution and higher revisit rates than the SkySats, while also being able to deliver this data in just minutes. In a world that is increasingly fast-changing and unpredictable, this type of high-quality information on demand will be a game-changer for our customers who need to make quick decisions, sometimes even to save lives. Finally, as part of a public-private partnership called Carbon Mapper, we're developing hyperspectral imaging satellites to add to our fleet. I'm extremely excited about this because these advanced sensors will allow us to see the Earth in a totally different way than most people are used to. Our human eye allows us to see the world in just three colors, red, green, and blue. The other colors that we perceive are really just mixes of these three. But these satellites are called hyperspectral because they will see in literally hundreds of different and uniquely distinct colors. By doing this, they can measure the surface properties of materials, and they can even see gases in the air. This is going to enable incredible new applications, from monitoring of emissions of greenhouse gases like methane to measuring ecosystem biodiversity and even chemically fingerprinting industrial military sites. In the past, Planet has succeeded by building flexible systems that can scale up to large numbers. So we're designing this with that in mind. Both of these satellites will make use of a high-performance spacecraft platform that combines the best of the Dove and SkySat designs and then adds in entirely new state-of-the-art technologies. This platform is already under development today, and it will upgrade and future-proof our space infrastructure, meaning we can expect to add more product capabilities over time. Finally, all of the data from these different sensors will flow together into our platform where it can be fused together, including with other non-planet data, and this will provide a deeper understanding for our partners and customers. This is exactly what our Planet Fusion product does today. By combining our proprietary imagery with publicly available data from national space programs like Landsat and Copernicus, we can create a seamless and accurate measurement of the Earth's surface that is better than any of those input data sets alone. Now, to illustrate this whole system at work, let's just walk through a simple example. Imagine for the moment that you've been tasked with monitoring for gas leaks in a large oil field like the Permian Basin in Texas. There are many oil and gas companies, and they are actively exploring and drilling here, and it's a very large and dynamic area to manage. PlanetScope daily monitoring can keep an eye on the area for you, passively watching for change, and this alerts you that something is happening. Perhaps it's the start of a new drilling operation. Once this change has been spotted, a SkySat can be quickly tasked to zoom in on the region to investigate. Now you have a much more fine-grained view of the site, and this confirms that there is, in fact, new construction with several structures. But without sending an inspector all the way there, you can't know exactly the status of the site yet. So finally, by triggering the collection of a hyperspectral image, you can start to see what the visible light sensors cannot. And this reveals that there is, in fact, a large ongoing methane leak happening. Only now, by combining these different data sets together, have you built up a full understanding of the situation? And now you have enough information to decide and therefore to act. So this was just a simple example. But now imagine completely automating that workflow with machines doing the analysis and the tasking of the satellites instead of humans. 
and then speed it up so it just takes a few minutes and then do it all over the planet for all types of applications and the power of the virtual constellation becomes clear. It provides actionable knowledge that will continually improve as we upgrade the hardware and software and add in more and more data. Agile Aerospace is the engine that will drive this improvement, but ultimately for the end user, the details of the satellites won't even matter. They can be totally abstracted away and all that matters is that your questions are quickly and accurately answered. I think this is a very exciting future. And today we're at a watershed moment where the up-to-date information available to everyone will change forever. This will transform businesses to run more efficiently. It will make governments more effective at implementing policies and it will help us to better mitigate and respond to disasters and climate change. In closing, I believe this is going to make understanding about change on our planet just as easily accessible as Google has made information online. You've seen what we've built in the past 10 years, and honestly, we're just getting started. We intend to be at the forefront of this next phase of Earth observation, and we hope that you're as excited about that as we are. Come explore with us, and thank you for watching.